I'm like 300 feet from the largest rock it ever made. This feels like it should be illegal, but yeah. it's not. This trip to Boca Chica may be the busiest that I've ever seen Starbase. From people literally getting engaged by the rocket. I, did they just get engaged? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let them steal my thunder, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> to meeting up with friends that I've networked with on X and just running across people from around the world that have a shared love of Starship, I interviewed some pretty interesting people ahead of the launch. Gotta hold on to my hat for dear life because it is windy out here at Starbase, but this is a great example of expectation versus reality. As you can see in the distance there, there is the Rocket Garden, which is unfortunately closed to the public now, but this is Remedios Road, which I've been visiting now for several years, and it looks so different with the addition of this parking structure and then this amazing mural that we see of what a future on Mars could look like with some biospheres, with some landing pads and with some starships that will probably look a lot different by the time they're actually landing on Mars. But I just wanted to show you guys some of the changes out here. And this is one of the big changes. And I think they did a pretty good job. This first interview is with Andrew McCarthy, and he's a pretty well-known astronomy photographer on the internet. But lately, he's been captivated by starship launches, and it's not hard to figure out why. And so you were here for the last launch so I'm gonna look to you because I wasn't here in person for the catch describe that moment uh, it's hard to put it into words honestly um, you know of course you know we weren't sure if they were going to actually go for the catch so when we saw the booster actually falling out of the sky heading towards the pad there was kind of this realization that it was either about to blow up or do change humanity forever um, and then you know we saw it come in and that booster landed got caught perfectly by those chopsticks and uh, it was overwhelming, honestly. Um, I mean, the reactions from the crowd around me at South Padre Island was insane. People going nuts, people jumping around. I felt emotional uh, because I felt like in that moment, I knew we were going to Mars. Um, what Elon Musk dreamed up with this rocket was seemed so far out there, I never thought in a million years we'd be able to actually catch this thing. Uh, but we did, we did it somehow, uh, you know? And, uh, and it's going to better humanity. It's going to increase our footprint in space uh, tremendously. We are on the cusp of a Cambrian explosion of our presence in space. Yeah. Uh, and we were here to witness it. Uh, and you're going to be witnessing it tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so jealous because I've watched that video probably, you know, a hundred times now. But it, it must have felt like a whole new experience. You know, even watching a launch is kind of surreal. And um, everyone needs to do it at least once in their lifetime. But to see it catch when so many people doubted that that was even possible. Yeah, it's it's really hard to explain because you're seeing something that is so far removed from anything you've seen in your life. You know, obviously we see planes fly, you know, we see these things fly. This is different. This is a skyscraper. We're seeing a skyscraper take off into the sky, enter space, and then come back down and be caught by these little arms um, with flames shooting out of it. It's so out there and so science fiction that it feels like you're watching CGI in real life, but it is real. I assure you it is real. I saw it with my own two eyes and we're gonna see it again tomorrow. It's amazing. Uh, so the sonic booms definitely hit you. I felt it in my chest. Um, it, it's actually interesting the timing of the son sonic boom. Because of the delay of the speed of sound, we actually heard the sonic boom right at the moment the booster connected with that tower. Uh, and it kind of added to that whole experience. Um, that was from about five miles away. So if you're a little closer than that, maybe at one of these places down here by the Riviera, you might hear it a little bit sooner. Um, it's not so loud, it blows out your eardrums or anything, but it definitely surprises you like a shotgun blast. Stop! Stop! I, did they just get engaged? <laughs> I'll let them steal my thunder. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I should go oh, interview great. the newlyweds. You should. <laughs> um, you are an astronomy <clears throat> photographer, but now you're becoming quite a rocket photographer. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm dabbling. Uh, yeah, I, I usually shoot things that are beyond our atmosphere. This sort of counts because it ends up up there. Uh, so, yeah, it's it was just kind of a passing interest to me. So I went to IFT2, it was my first rocket launch, wow. and what a rocket launch, uh, and I became absolutely addicted. So ever since then, I've been 
trying to get to every single one of these I can, even though it's a bit of a trek from Arizona. Uh, and it's so worth it. I, I mean, I, I can't emphasize that enough. If you haven't seen a launch, just go see one because it's incredible. Well, and you can, you know, attest to the fact that the it, it is becoming more restrictive. So come down sooner than later because we don't know how long it'll be this yeah. accessible, especially since we're back here. <laughs> yeah, you know, look at this. Probably should, like, it doesn't <laughs> like, seem like we I'm, should be. I'm like 300 feet from the largest rocket ever made. This feels like it should be illegal, but yeah. it's not. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm able to stand here. Don't worry, there's the <laughs> Private property signs. Yeah. We're, uh, we are not trespassing. Um, that is awesome. Oh yeah, tell me about like what you did on the last launch. I, th I thought that that was really interesting, your sort of experiment or... Oh yeah, sure. Um, so I rented this really expensive lens, this giant lens. Uh, it was about 17 grand if I bought it. I don't worry, I only paid like a hundred bucks a day or something to rent it. Um, it was a 800 millimeter Canon F.4 lens for all you camera geeks out there. Um, and what I did with it was um, I wanted to record a video of the Starship, but not at the expense of resolution. So I was capturing photos and then I stitched them together as a video. Um, and then I interpolated them to keep the video smooth. And then I hand aligned everything to make it really, really smooth and crisp for the entire launch sequence. I was able to capture everything from the moment of launch, the stage separation to the booster catch. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing it again with a slightly wider field of view. So hopefully that uh, video slash photos turn out really cool. And I mean, it's also crazy to think that, what was it just a year ago today that uh, IFT2 launched. Mm -hmm. that, was my, that was my first launch. And this is five launches later, or so like that's that's really frequent for the largest rocket ever built. I mean, most um, most space companies don't get that many launches in an entire year, uh, and this is just one experimental rocket. We'll see. I mean, I think there'll always be a market for the small uh, for the small rockets, but when you can fit so much more payload for less price. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we'll just be sending up bigger things. <laughs> I also ran into John Stringer, who is the president of the Tesla Owners Club of Silicon Valley. They just surpassed 1 million followers on X. And despite being heavily involved in the Tesla scene, John has made it out to many launches because you just simply can't miss what's going on down at Starbase. And let me tell you, folks, it's much crazier to see it in person. So I've been to four out of the six. This is going to be my fourth one. And I have not seen, I did not come to the Starship 5 launch. And so to be able to see this and have the Megazilla chopsticks catch it is going to be crazy. The past three that I've been to, you know, you it goes up and you, you don't see it again. And so this, to be able to see it eight minutes later, come back down and be caught again, 26 stories, like the height of something that's 26 stories, be caught by two chopsticks perfectly. I mean, I can't believe, to be honest, major FOMO from missing the first one. And to be able to see this, this is the holy grail, right? Reusable rockets. We see the Falcon 9 going up almost every day. I think they did, uh, they just passed one where they did three in 24 hours or something insane like that. So I can't wait to see this become like the Falcon 9, but this is all part of that history to get to that point. I've had, I brought two of my daughters to this, um, and one of my daughters actually got a Star Factory tour. Um, and really it's, it's about showing, uh, you know, what the future could hold, right? If you think about it, when was the last time rockets were going up um, and we were really pushing the limits of space explorations, it was the 70s. And so for us to be able to be in this lifetime, I mean, I miss the Falcon 9. I mean, it's going up every day, but to be able to see the Starship is very special. So to bring them out here, to, for them to see the engineering, it gives them um, just excitement about the future, about what is possible. And again, this is uh, really about pushing the limits and taking big risks. And more importantly, um, a public company or more or less a, a government company cannot be taking risks like this. So for them to be able to see the Starship go up and come down, um, or, you know, obviously they only went and saw it go up, is just, it's a game changer. And actually the funny thing is my daughter actually took uh, some amazing footage and actually did better than my footage, uh, but she had it where this person was just jumping out of joy. Um, so just having those memories with them, it's, uh, it's huge. Um, yeah, take your kids, bring the whole family, and again, who knows how long we will be able to come out here and stand right before this thing on the mudflats. They've already shut down the rocket garden. This thing is continuing to grow. If you've been out here uh, by any means, like you see how this place just changes overnight. It, 
it all the time. I mean, since the last time you were here, it's changed. It's the second tower. <laughs> exactly. There's a lot happening here. They even moved the hopper outside of, uh, you know, the actual first nice. and second. So it's really exciting times. Uh, bring out the whole family. It's really family friendly. Obviously, just bring some sunblock and some chairs and some food and you're good. And do you like watching it from East Blanca Park? Yes, so that is probably one of the most accessible places to go. You can literally get a front row seat. Make sure you get there early. Um, and the only thing really that's going to be blocking you is maybe some boats. But, you know, you really get the full experience. Again, if you get there early, sometimes it can be a little bit harder with kids. But I brought my two young daughters to it. And you can make it work and uh, just bring something for them to play with. And they're going to have an amazing time. And I couldn't help myself, but I wanted to know the story behind this very conspicuous truck. Okay, so I am here with? Uh, Doge Tipping. Doge Tipping. Yeah. And I couldn't help but notice your very conspicuous cyber truck with this uh, logo here. Tell me about it. So uh, this is the, uh, actually I ha have this picture from Elon's post, um, the Department of Government Efficiency. Um, but at the same time, you can see I have all the Doge head on the car. So basically, I'm doing the uh, crypto stuff. I do believe Dogecoin can be the future transactional currency. And I do believe the Department of Government Efficiency is going to save America. Yeah, I couldn't tell that you believed it, but <laughs> so you want to go to the moon and Mars, but to the moon. Yeah, of course, to the moon. Where is the starship right here? So when you were pointing out that, you know, it was just a year ago that we were only on Starship Flight 2 and already in a year we're on the sixth flight. Exactly. So with, that's with like the Democrats, right? Right now we got Trump and we got Elon. <laughs> I couldn't believe probably next year we got Flight 20. Who knows, right? And we got probably got a do like the Starship have a doge on it. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen. How many launches have you been to? Uh, so total, this is my third one. Third. I've been here like the second and fourth and the sixth. Okay, so yeah. you haven't seen the catch yet in person either. No, I'm super excited to seeing that, and uh, I'm I kind of. I kind of cross my finger to hope the weather is good so yeah. I can see the cash clearly. Yes. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, I'm dro I drove my separate truck all the way from Orange County, uh, South California to here. Uh, 1,600,000, yeah. <laughs> I mean 600, 1,600 miles to here to see the Starship launch. Oh my God, and how many people stopped you on the way? <laughs> A lot of people. <laughs> like when I drive on the way, like people just nonstop taking picture of the car. Wow. Yes. And why do you come all this way? Because I want to spread the meme. That's yeah. that's all about, you know, who controls the meme controls the universe. Oh my God, I love it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And they can find you on X at Doge Tipping. Right here. Yes. Awesome. You Thank you. No Thank to the moon. You. To the moon. And finally, I interviewed someone who came all the way from China for the second time. He actually wasn't able to see the launch the first time he attempted to come here. So he's here and he is ready to see the Starship launch. I, I've run into people from all around the world, South Africa, New Zealand, Germany, and people that are coming multiple times. This is a major effort to come here. So it's just amazing to see the, the fandom, the global fandom that people have for SpaceX and people from all around the world. Which, by the way, if you haven't been down here, you really need to come. <laughs> and you're from near Beijing, China. Yeah, that's true. Like uh, only two hours on the train, maybe. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and you came all the way, this is your second time? Yeah, like uh, a month ago, like a uh, uh, fifth flight. I crossed the Pacific Ocean to get here, but uh, instead <laughs> I stay in Houston when that happened. It's like uh, I was so close. Wait, why did you have to stay in Houston? Flight got delayed. Your flight got delayed, so he came all the way from China and didn't make the launch last time. So this time you're here, you're ready? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. I came here like in days of advance just to like, so I can prepare everything. I can so be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah. So what do, what do the Chinese think of SpaceX? Oh my gosh, there are a lot of fans. Like uh, they really, really like SpaceX. Like uh, every news, like they just uh, report it uh, even in China. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, some people they don't believe it. Uh, okay, they, they said, "Well, oh, maybe this is just a CGI. Maybe this is a fake or something like that." Well, we're here in person, so it's real. Yeah. <laughs> this is not made up. Um, what What do you love about it? I mean, why? That's such a long journey. It's expensive. You know, yeah. that's a lot of investment to come here. Yeah, that's true. 
uh, but uh, you know, I got some uh, in my account, back account, you know, like. <laughs> He's got the funds to come here. Yeah. What does it mean to be here at Starbase? Like, what do you think about it? Oh my gosh, it's like, a, you know, the, I don't know how to say this, like the, you can touch the future, I, I guess, like. Okay. A, yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, I, I don't know, like, uh, if that's, uh, that's true, but uh, Elon said uh, they are going to have 25 launches next year. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's like, you know, if this happens, like, uh, if the Starship actually works as Elon said, that's going to be, like, uh, the human human going to change. Like, the civilization, civilization will change. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen the Chinese Elon Musk? <laughs> Elon Ma? Have you seen him yeah, on TikTok? Yeah, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm... Iluma, come on, Tesla. Yeah, but uh, you know, in China, I we just think it's like uh, I don't know, someone just wants some uh, attention, like he just use deep fakes. Uh, that. I was gonna say, is he using a filter? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay, definitely. Okay. <laughs> well, but he's funny. Yeah, but uh, in China, you have way better English than him. <laughs> In China, people don't like him, okay? Okay, you like the real Elon Musk. Yeah, real Elon Musk, if yeah. If you could tell Elon Musk anything, what would you tell him? Oh my gosh, that's gonna be a... <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a big question. Um, probably, I just uh, say, okay, thank you for everything. You are really an inspiration. Like, uh, we all love you. Like, uh, you are, like, the I don't know, you are gonna be the person who changed everything. Like, uh, I just... Uh, admire you like I look up to you yes, like yeah yeah yes. you have such a mode uh, inspire all of us yes <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed this little compilation and I hope that you enjoy my live coverage later today thank you so much for watching this video please make sure to subscribe to Ellie in space and our t-shirt store is open just for one more day as of the recording of this video so the link is in the comments please make sure to order your Mechazilla shirt and thank you so much for watching this video I'll see you in the next one.